So I go there and they say, hey, Gene, would you like to actually meet Donald Trump? So I actually went there and it was perfect because I never met Donald Trump before and they said, hey, would you like to go up on his airplane? They called it Trump Force One at the time and they say, would you like to meet Donald Trump personally? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So how many people here have ever met Donald Trump before? Okay, I'm going to give you, give you the tip. All right, the tip of what to do. You just have to act so normal like it's not a big deal. So I go on his airplane and I meet Donald Trump. I said, hello, Mr. Trump. Meanwhile, I'm texting my wife going, oh my goodness, I want Donald Trump's airplane. <laughs> so after I meet him, evidently we kicked it off and they said to me, Gene, would you like to be Donald Trump's personal campaign photographer for the day? I said, all right, that'd be great. This is a true story. Next thing I know, I am in the green room with Donald Trump. And for those of you who know, the green room is just like a small room. So it's me and Donald Trump and his one bodyguard, Keith, that you might remember. So here was the best part about it. I'm just sitting there hanging out with Donald Trump. And all of a sudden, it was an event like this, and we get a knock on the door. Hold up, Mr. Trump. I'll go see who that is. So I open the door, and this is a true story. The guy comes in, and he's from the kitchen staff. And he goes to me, hey, I heard Donald Trump is back there. Is there any way I can get a selfie with him? Hold up, let me ask. <laughs> Mr. Trump, there's someone from the kitchen staff wants to know if they could get a selfie with you. No problem. <laughs> okay. He's really busy, he has to talk in a little while, but you could do that, go get a picture with him. And then no lie, the guy says this, he goes, one more thing, is there any way I could get a video of him saying that I'm fired? <laughs> God, dude, this is my first day at work, if you want to do it, you go ask him, but I'm not going to ask him. So the guy actually, this is a true story, the guy actually did it, I couldn't believe it. He took out his cell phone, gets his picture with him, he goes, Donald, can I get a video of you saying that I'm fired? No problem. Okay, now, you're fired. The guy goes, no, 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 you have to use my name, you have to use my name. Okay, I'll use your name. Okay, ready, two, three, now. Joseph, you're fired. And the guy goes, hold up, I was on photo and not video. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, it was the most amazing thing. The guy leaves, he gets his picture, and I am telling you, Donald Trump was so polite to this guy. So finally I go to him, I was like, Mr. Trump, I'm not gonna even lie. I thought when I first met you, you would be the biggest jerk in the world. But this guy, he was from the kitchen staff and he gave him all the time in the world. No problem, thanks. <laughs> now you're fired. So it ended up really well with him. And the first thing that everyone talked to me about Donald Trump is that he was a very racist man. And I'm telling you, after this event, it was great. He hired me out to do another event. So I do another event with him. I thought I impressed him, but there was a third event going there that he didn't hire me for. So this was about, I would say, about four hours away from where we were the next day. And this was the interesting thing about it. True story here when it comes to this. I wasn't invited to take pictures of him. This was about maybe three or four months before he officially became a, a nominee. So I said, hey, this place, it was in South Carolina, but it was about four hours, so it would be like from here to maybe Bentonville. And so I told my wife, I said, you know what, I really like working for this guy. So, I, you know, I'd like to work with him again. So one morning, I knew he was going to be someplace about four hours away. I woke up early at 4 a.m., put on a jacket, and I was really embarrassed because my wife says, what are you doing? You're dressed up at 4 a.m. And I was too embarrassed to tell her that I was going to work for Donald Trump for free. So I just said, uh, I'm cheating on you. <laughs> <laughs>
So I wake up and I go down there and I end up working for Donald Trump. But here's a very interesting thing about it. One of my first jobs that I had was to take the VIP photos and it was really interesting because there was another person there, his name is Pastor Mark Burns and he was a black man. And so one of the first jobs I had is to go take pictures. And I go in there and they said, Mr. Trump would like pictures with Pastor Mark Burns and his family backstage. I said, no problem. So I go there, I walk into the room and I look around and I'm like, I am the only white person in this room. <laughs> and then I realize I'm not even white. <laughs> Pastor Mark Burns thought that Jackie Chan was taking their picture. <laughs> so it ended up really good. I ended up being Donald Trump's personal campaign photographer for the whole time for two years. This was in 2015 and 16. And one of the things that I have to say that I really made me love him was I had a chance to do the VIP photos. And the VIP photos are really neat. And basically it's a room probably about the size of this, this section here. And we would all sit around waiting for Donald Trump to get in the room. And you had all these different people in the room. But this was the interesting thing about Donald Trump. When he walked into the room, he would bypass all the VIPs, the senators, the Congress people, and he walked to the back of the room where the first responders and the men in uniform were, and he shook all their hands first. And it, was, it, was, it was amazing to see. And the other thing about it was when he did this, what I thought was really the neatest thing about it is that when he was doing this, we had to do two lines. It was the VIP line and the regular person's line. And I'm telling you, the first time I was doing this, I was, there was uh, senators there, there was governors there, but when I went there I said, okay, we're going to do the VIP line. There was even times when it was the family of Laura Trump that was there, but the VIP line was not them, it was always the first responders. We could skip the VIP, uh, the regular photos, but we can never skip the VIP photos. So even if he got done with a rally and we didn't get the chance to do any of them because he was behind on time, we always had to do the VIPs with the first responders. It was really wonderful, and that was a man I saw. But here is a difference, and here is a message that I have for all of us here, which is very interesting. When this all happened, I, back in 2015 and 16, I was part of the silent majority. At the time, I had a very, very thriving business. I was a photographer for t with 25 photographers working for me. So, in the arts, it's very liberal. So when my photographers were saying to me, hey, Gene Ho, hey, what are you doing taking pictures of Donald Trump? And quite frankly, I would lie. Because I was like, hey, listen, it's all cool. We're doing a job. I'm just doing a job just like we have a wedding. We take pictures. And I was silent about it. But the day before the 2015 election, I did my final job, and actually it in, was in uh, Ma uh, Madison Cawthorn's district in Fayetteville, or in, in that area, North Carolina. I did the last event there, went back home because it was my family's, uh, how can I say this, uh, what we did every time for the elections is we'd watch it together as a family. And so that night, and you can double check it, it's all there. I changed my Facebook pro profile from private to public and I endorsed Donald Trump. And of course you remember, that was a wonderful morning. You remember when he won the next morning, was that great? Yeah. But this is what I didn't expect to happen with me at this time. I don't know if anyone has ever been audited by the IRS. <laughs> When I started with Donald Trump, I got audited the first time. When Donald Trump won, I got audited the second time. And it was so, it was so amazing because even my CPA was saying, no, this has to be a mistake. They don't audit you one right after another. They usually wait a few years. But the second time I got audited, I am telling you, my life got thrown into a tailspin. First of all, because I came out publicly that I was supporting Donald Trump, a lot of my photographers quit on me, all right? So my photographers quit on me because they were saying that I was not for them or whatever. The other thing is, they, people started boycotting me. And you might say, how could a person that's a wedding photographer 
be boycotted. I thought I was on top of the world, but they would go to the different places where people get married and ask them for the preferred vendors list. And when your name shows up, they say, oh, sorry, we were going to book your location. But if you support this man that supports a racist, we can't deal with you. And so I started losing a lot, a lot of money. And then plus, I had the IRS audit. So here's the thing that what happened with me with that. I am telling you, when I was 30 years old, I was so successful as a photographer that not only did I have a couple of homes, I had my own stretch black limousine with my own driver. I used to make a lot of money because I had 25 photographers doing weddings every weekend. That all went away. And then I had the IRS on it, which had that. So here's the thing, I'm gonna just say it like this. There is no problem with being poor. The problem is being rich and then poor. <laughs> So I started losing a lot of money, and it was a very difficult time in my life. And I'll never forget it because there was one time after, this was, this IRS audit went on for about nine months. And I'll never forget it because on the last time they had not only the IRS agent, but the field agent, like basically the whole person in charge of the area. So it was that field agent in charge of the whole area, my CPA, and myself for a meeting. And I'm telling you, I pulled up a fourth chair and I said, Jesus Christ, please sit in that chair and watch what they're doing to me. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Jesus saves, faith grows in darkness. And I'm telling you, that is what happened to me. And by the way, two years ago, I got Baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you think about all this stuff, and then since then, what my family decided to do, and this is how you know that I'm telling the truth, because right after Donald Trump won, I, I really thought, I really thought that my life was going to get so amazingly better, and all of this stuff happened, and so... My wife said, well, why don't you write a book about Donald Trump? And so I did that. Of course, no one wanted to publish it and all this stuff. So we went, me and my wife, we had the book, and we struggled for a long time. And there was times when I used to live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We would travel, and we would do events like this and sell out books there. And my wife, Nadine, said to me, she goes, listen, one of the things that you could do is every time you speak about Donald Trump, use it as an excuse to talk about Jesus Christ. And maybe he'll sustain you. I, I, I'm telling you, there were times when we left Myrtle Beach to go to California with all these events. And I'm telling you, when we traveled down there, this is the truth, there was times when we didn't have enough money to get back if we didn't sell anything. But... My wife said, every time you're out there, they want to hear about Donald Trump. Also talk about Jesus Christ, and he will sustain you. So it's an amazing thing. And by the way, I do uh, have my book out there in the hallway. Uh, we do have a credit card swiper, but pay cash so I don't have to report it to the IRS. <laughs> Joking! <laughs> Joking! <laughs> my wife hates that joke, I'm telling you. But really... <laughs> They're going to put that on film and everything. Oh, uh, your honor. He didn't know. Anyway, it's been really wonderful. And since then, the other great thing that has happened is that uh, I don't know if you ever heard of JFK Jr.'s magazine called George. And that, yep, I'm now the editor in chief of George magazine. Not a bad gig, by the way. Very, very good. Yeah. And, of course, I'm very proudly so. Uh, we, me and my family, uh, about two years ago, we moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas. So we love it. We, uh, we went in on a, uh, just a journey of faith. Uh, I am still on tour nowadays. By the way, in 2020, I was a campaign photographer for Trump, but uh, working under uh, Donald Trump Jr. So I worked under him there. Uh, 
Then after that, right now, currently, besides being editor-in-chief, I'm on tour. I got one more event to do with uh, Eric Trump. So it's wonderful that I'm getting a chance to tour. But the reason why we're here two years ago when we're on tour, we wanted a place near the middle of the country. And we've been everywhere, and I'm telling you, honestly, honestly, there is no better place and no better people than the people of the great state of Arkansas. I, I, I mean that with all, with all, all my heart, and we uh, moved here to Hot Springs and never moved back. Uh, we love it so much. Uh, George Magazine is an Arkansas company, and what we're doing is we are having, in the summer, June 10th and 11th, we're having our first live event in Hot Springs. Oh, oh, oh look at you, August. <laughs> That's my accountant. No, just joking. <laughs> anyway, it's really wonderful to be here. Uh, the other message that I do want to say, what I found is the big problem, not with us here, because everyone here is engaged, the big problem in America with a lot of the new MAGA people that came in, and I'm MAGA, but a lot of people, they really don't understand how the system works. And what we have, the big problem that we have, is a lot of the down ballots and the state level down ballots and the local level. Uh, some of the MAGA people, which I am MAGA, are, do not know how important those races are. They don't understand how when you go into Congress that we need a majority so we have all the chairmanships. All these, am I correct here with that? Yeah, yeah. This is so important. It's almost like an education, because I get it. I really do get it, because a lot of us here love Trump. But you guys are the ones that actually know how this thing works and how the system works here. And that is what we have to teach a lot of people, because in this mode, that nothing matters except for Trump becomes president. But we're going to be in trouble if, that, if the, uh, they win back the House this, this place is going to be a mess anyway. So all the down ballots, the local and the state, they all matter. So that's one of the messages. And the other message is also when it comes to all of this, uh, I'm telling you, we cannot be the silent majority anymore. We're coming into election day and we have to be vocal again. And I get it because a lot of us, quite frankly, including myself, we have been so absolutely burdened down with all this stuff and we're just like getting tired of it and we almost can't wait for election day but now is the time to step up the other thing is when it comes to this obviously the main thing with all of this is faith in Jesus Christ is paramount to what yes. we're doing yeah. and that is really at the end of the day where we have to rest our hopes with yes. that all being said we have another great speaker here coming up I've been hanging out with him all afternoon after this lunch, I'm going to be in my booth if anyone wants to uh, see me out there. And then hopefully after that, I'm going to just go see at this. What's District 3 next? Or one? Okay. One is going to be uh, next. I might go sit in there for a little while. But I just want to let everyone know, please check out georgemagazine.com. Consider, please, the live event that we're going to. There's a lot of speakers there, including Amanda Grace. It's not all politics. We have Amanda Grace. Donate Clement, uh, we have a lot of other people that are going to be there. So I just want to thank you. It's an honor for me to be called a citizen of Arkansas. I'm so excited about it. And I just thank you and thank everyone here.